Well, hello, Internet, and welcome to part 10 of my algebra video tutorial series. In this part of the tutorial, I'm going to talk about determinants, cofactors, as well as cofactored matrices. So I have a lot to do, so let's get into it. Okay, so the very first thing I want to talk about before we talk about determinants is square matrices. A square matrix is just a matrix that has the same number of rows as well as columns. So both of the matrices that you see right here are square matrices. Now a determinant is just a scalar value that is calculated using the values in a square matrix. They must be square matrix or you cannot find a determinant. And these are extremely valuable as you're gonna see in this video and especially in the next video. Determinants are extremely valuable. They're gonna make it very easy for you to make really complicated calculations very easily. Now to find a determinant, and there's different ways of saying that something's a determinant. So I have here, you can sort of basically put two lines, it looks like an absolute value like that, or you can write out determinant like that. Either way is perfectly fine. And if you are going to find the determinants, what you're going to do is you're going to take the A and the D value, this one right here, multiply that together, and then you're gonna get the C and the B value, multiply that together right here, and go and subtract to find the difference, and that is your determinants. So now I'll use this matrix here to show you how to get the determinant of B. So what we're going to do is I'm going to take the one, and I'm gonna multiply it, times the four, and then I'm going to subtract from it three times the two, and that of course gives me a value of four minus six, and that gives me a determinant for that matrix of negative two. Now to calculate a three by three determinant is a good bit more complicated. What we're going to do is you're going to need to construct a three by five matrix whenever you have a three by three uh, to calculate its determinant. And it's pretty easy to figure out what it is. Basically, the fourth column you're gonna create is just going to be a copy of the first. And then the fifth column you create is going to be a copy of the second. All right, so that's how you turn this three by three matrix into this five by three matrix. Then what you need to do is you're going to go and you're going to multiply the values in this situation, one, five, and nine, right here, times each other, and then take the value here of two, six, and seven, multiply those together. Then you're gonna take three, four, and eight, multiply those together, and then you're going to sum the results. Then you're going to start in the lower left-hand corner, and you're going to take the 7 and the 5 and the 3, multiply those together, the 8, the 6, and the 1, the 9, the 4, and the 2, and then you'll get the sum of those. And whenever you get those two sums, you're going to subtract them from each other, and that is going to give you a determinant. I am going to do it for you right now, just so you can see it, using this example that we have right here. So what am I gonna do? I'm going to get one, well, let's go and surround it with parentheses. So I'm gonna get one times five times nine plus and two times six times seven plus three and times four times eight. Get that guy right there. And that is going to work out too. If I go and multiply, well, let's go and get the other one. So we're going to subtract from that this next row. And this is going to be, again, seven times five times three plus eight times six times one plus and nine times four times two. And those are going to work out to be, let's go and do this in steps, 45 plus 84 plus 
96 minus, and the next one will be 105 plus 48 plus 72. And then those work out to be 255 minus 255. So that's a whole bunch of calculations to get your final determinant of zero, but that's exactly what it is. All right, so hopefully you understand determinants. Don't worry if you haven't 100% got them because they will be brought up again in future videos because they are extremely valuable. And first, I, however, I want to talk about a cofactor. All right, so a cofactor is just the value you get when you remove the column and row of a designated element in a matrix. And then with what is left, you go and find the determinant. So in this example, I am going to say that I want to find the cofactor for A22. Well, that means I need to get rid of the column and the row for it. So I have to get rid of that and that and all of that row. And what does that leave me? Well, it leaves me this, 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 and this. So then what I need to do is go and find the determinant for what is left. So pretty simple. So that's going to be in this situation, one, three, seven, and nine. I'm just going to focus in only on those and find that. And if you don't remember the determinant, basically it is A times D minus B times C. Oops, there you are, makes sense. And that's it. So if I go and transpose this matrix up here, Let's do it like this, and we're gonna have one and three and seven and nine. We can then use our formula we have down here, and of course, the upper left-hand corner, this is going to be A and B, and this is going to be C and D down here. So what I can simply do now, A times D minus B times C. So it will be one, times nine minus seven times three, which of course is going to give us a value of negative 12. All right, and that is how that works out. And whenever we start working with bigger matrices, one thing that is extremely important to remember is you're going to use this matrix here plus negatives and plus exactly like this and when this is whenever we try to find the cofactoring of an entire matrix instead of just one value and i'll show you in the next slide and examples exactly how this matrix right here is going to help us find answers to going and calculating the cofactor of a matrix all right so there's a whole bunch of formulas here but i hope it'll make some sense Basically, what our goal is, is to calculate the cofactor for each of these individual values. Now, they're going to be calculated in exactly the same way that we calculated this one center value. We're going to get rid of whatever the row and column values are, and whatever is left afterwards is going to determine what we are going to be multiplying. So, in that situation, as you can see with this formula that we have for calculating P11, what we're simply going to do is create a two by two matrix based off the location. So if the location's here, well, that means we can't use anything on this row and we can't use, and we can't use anything on this column. So what does that leave us? Well, it leaves us with these values down here that we're working with, or in this specific situation, these values right here. So if we want to find the cofactor for this, we go and find the determinant for that. All right. And that is all you need to do to go and find all of these values. Likewise, if we were trying to get this value right here, what would we do? We'd get rid of this whole entire column. We'd get rid of this row right here. And then we would use what is left to create a matrix, which is going to be 
this group here next to this group here and then find the determinant. Okay, so hopefully that is not too complicated to understand now. And in the next slide, I'm going to show you how to calculate and find the cofactor of the matrix. Okay, so I'm going to use everything that I just covered here, and I'm just going to plug in some values. The only thing is, remember I mentioned this guy right here? Well, what you're going to do is, if you're trying to find this value right here, you're going to multiply the result times a positive 1. If you're trying to find this part of the cofactoring of this matrix, which would be the first row, second column, you're going to multiply whatever the result is times a negative one, and a positive one, and a negative one, and a positive one, and a negative one, and a positive one, and a negative one, and a positive one, okay? So that is the only thing that's a little bit weird about this that you have to remember. You have to remember this, but it shouldn't be that hard to figure out because what does it look like? It basically looks like a big X with plus signs, right? So pretty easy to remember what that is. All right. So now we're going to plug in our values based off of what we have covered. So this is going to become 5 times 9 minus 6 times 8. And if we go and get that result and multiply it times 1, that is going to give us a final answer. Where am I going to write this thing at? Didn't even think about that. Okay, that's going to put us, where, where do I have space at? How about we put it up here? So we'll put it up here. This is our answer area in the upper right hand corner. So if I go and make this calculation and find the value for P11 and multiply it times a positive one, I get a value of negative three. So there is negative three. That's the first part of calculating our cofactor of a matrix. So now we want row one, column two. Again, we're going to get four. We're going to get nine and we are going to get six and seven. And where did I get those from? Well, I'm gonna show you here one more time. So this is what I'm trying to find. That means I can't use this, this uh, row and I can't use this column. So that leaves me with four and seven. I multiply the four times the nine and then I multiply the six times the seven and then I subtract them, okay? And then I go and I uh, multiply it times negative one because it's the position that it is and if I do that I get a value of six and I'm gonna do some more here for you I'm gonna do them all for you so let's go and get four and eight minus seven times five and if I do that for the final one I get negative three as well and I'll do the next one so this is going to be two times nine and three times eight. And if you want to pause your video and go and try to solve it on your own, then and come back, that's perfectly fine as well. All right, and then if I do that, I get a value of six, and then I can go and get one times nine, and a seven times a three, and if I go and do all that calculating, I get a value of negative 12, and then I go and do the last one here, which is going to be one times eight and seven times two and if I get that value I'm going to be multiplying a negative one times a negative six so that gives me a value of positive six and then I'll do the last three which is going to be two times six and three times five and then one times six and four times three and if I multiply all that out, I get another value. Whoops, did I do that right? Yeah, wait a minute, did I do that right? Da, 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 da. Oh, I forgot to write this down, that's why I'm confused. So this is negative three. And then for the next one, I go and do that calculation, I get a value of six. And then for the final one, I get one times five minus four times two. And if I do that, I get a negative Three. And there it is. And let me double check my work just to make sure I did it all right. And it looks like I did. All right. So now you understand determinants and cofactoring.
And in the next part of the video, I'm gonna still say with matrices, I'm going to talk about the Kramer's rule and how it provides a very easy way for us to solve systems of equations. So like always, please leave your questions and comments down below. Otherwise, till next time.